Hello all, uh, I thought I will show you how to log uh, load on a stock DSM ECU. Uh, the values are indexed by uh, grams per CAS interrupt input. Yeah, so it's basically RPM divided by two. So uh, we get a scale that looks something like uh, something like this. Yeah, we have our rows, we have uh, 12 rows from 0 to 11 or 1 to 12, whichever you prefer. <coughs> and we, we go gradually up to 1 gram per half RPM since we are indexing 720 degrees. So this is how it's done. Uh, I will show you how it's working. So I will start the logger and I start the trace and I open up my fuel, ma fuel map. Uh, this is uh, Tactical's uh, files, both of them, uh, both the uh, XDF and the ADX, which I used as my base. Uh, you can find it in his signature on the forums. So I just um, modified it to match these uh, real world numbers. So if we do a trace we can see the yellow dot is what the code is using and uh, the black blob is our trace blob. So if we go up in RPM uh, we get a shorter time to fill the cylinders so uh, <coughs> the load goes down. Uh, I have capped the airflow hertz at uh, 1603 just to show you how it's working since I don't want to uh, overrun the mass airflow sensor since it, in that case it would stay on the lower row at all times and that's not what I want in this example so if we, if I go down on the RPM you will see the traces are following it, each other and also the uh, indexed air uh, load is going up since we are uh, able to fill the cylinders uh, at a much higher rate and the item we are using here is uh, E2 and we can see as, as it goes up uh, let's see if we can make it go up to 255 and it's uh, temperature uh, governed so if the temperature goes up the value also goes up. So now we can see we are at 255 and we are at our max indexed load just from using the stock values from uh, the code. So if the RPM goes down you see the math transfer function follows uh, our black blob. So this is working just like it should. So if we get a high RPM and a much higher boost uh, or airflow count we would uh, go down to uh, the higher cells in real life but this is just an example to show you how accurate this is so uh, this is how it's done uh, you can see it's technical stuff uh, I have added a item I call index load. The conversion factor is x divided by yeah, and uh, this long number. This long number comes from uh, the fact that we have uh, 250, 0 to 255 uh, in an 8-bit container divided by 1.0292 two four seven and a lot of numbers you can also do one point zero two nine two divided by two fifty five and you get a smaller number then you have to use a multiplier instead of a divide this item is uh, used in the list for index load and uh, all the other values from his uh, load diagnostics macro which is also included. Everything is here. I have just added uh, the intake air temp. 
so you click save then you go back to your xdf and you copy your fuel table and paste then you press f2 and go into the edit and you can uh, i have added stock load to keep it separated so in the rows tab you select the ascii string and enter the values from uh, the stock code I can post those numbers it's the exact values that the code uses as we can see nothing different from that and then when we have entered all these we go into the da data acquisition tab uh, leave the x axis for pm and uh, click the Y axis, choose explicit and select your indexed load item like so. Okay, okay. So now when we open up the fuel table and uh, start to log, we see that if we enable the tracing, it traces at 7000 RPM and 0.55 in load. And if we enable the data tracing from the ECU, we see that it matches perfectly. <coughs> so I hope and uh, hope that this small tutorial helps someone to understand the load uh, indexing problem that we have in our code a little bit better. I can also show how to make a uh, 12 by 14. Uh, Airfuel ratio table history, so you can use it to match your own history and uh, calibrate your map from that. Thanks for watching.